Hi Internet, today I've got a sword review for you, uh, specifically the first sword review I've ever done. So I apologize if this is a little bit slipshod or anything like that, but uh, here goes. I recently purchased this from eBay. This is a Type 94 Shin Gunto reproduction. I bought it from a seller known as CN Best out of China, and um, well, I can already tell that some of you people who are well versed in the sword industry might be uh, rolling your eyes a little bit there, but um, let's just say I was pleasantly surprised by this. I've got one small gripe with it, but I'll just go over the sword just in general, see uh, all the details, all the specs and everything like that. I've got the site up here, so everything that I'm reporting back to you is either from personal experience or it's going to be from what the seller has actually told me because I reached out to them and asked them a couple of questions. Starting with blade specs, the overall length of this is about 41 inches or 104 centimeters, depending on whichever you prefer. Uh, the blade itself, which I'll show you, is made of 1058 pattern welded steel. It is full tang. I've uh, taken it apart to verify that. So it is full tang. Uh, according to the guy who sold this, it is differentially hardened, but it's not clay tempered. There's no hum on line or anything. I'm not sure how well that's coming up. I don't know. But it is pattern welded, so seeing if I can get the pattern in there to show up, it's, it's quite nice. It's not like really gratuitous or anything, but it is there. Um, the blade itself is about 28.5 inches or 72 centimeters. Handle is 11 inches or 28 centimeters. Um, it is quite thick. Uh, like, I know that the katana are usually very thick, but this one, I don't know, this one seems a little bit thicker than normal, almost. I, I really don't have much experience with them, so I wouldn't be able to tell. It's about 1.16 inches, or 3 centimeters thick. Uh, all of the fittings here are solid cast copper. Uh, the sire is steel with copper fittings. It's been, you can't really see it very well on the camera because the lighting in here is terrible, but it has been painted army green, and it's got wood in the middle of it. The ray skin is genuine. Uh, it has been artificially aged. In fact, all of the parts of this have. I neglected to ask what fabric the Ito wrapping is, but it's got all the proper Ganto mounts and everything. It's got the little push button thing that locks it into the Sire, which I personally really like. And all in all, it is quite a nice piece. I am quite happy with it, and uh, considering the kind of quality that you sometimes get out of um, no-name uh, no name places like out of China and India that aren't specifically made by like Hanway or Windless or something like that, there's no real quality control. So getting something that is good quality is kind of hit or miss. Um, there is one thing that I still haven't gone over about this sword. But uh, people who have been paying attention to my posts on the Sword Buyer's Guide forum will know what this was. Uh, it has been remedied, but it is worth mentioning. Specifically, the uh, tang of this sword was moving very slightly inside the handle when I got it. When I swung the sword, it would be like one or two millimeters in either way. It was not to the point of where, where I felt like it was going to come apart or anything. However, it was noticeable, like, in how you, like, you could feel it. You could feel it when you were swinging it. Now, eventually, a user on the Sword Buyer's Guide forum, by the name of John Francis, uh, did respond to my qualms and told me that just wrapping a bit of tape around the tang might solve the problem, and then they advised me to buy a new sword. Um, but... I tried the tape thing, and it worked like a charm. I'll see about getting this sword deconstructed a little bit later, just to show you all the parts and everything, but for the time being, I can just show you all the fittings. You can see here the artificial aging has caused 
the ray skin to be a kind of a brown color, and the copper is in no way shiny. Even, like, again, the lighting in this room is kind of bad, but the copper is not uh, shiny. It's got small areas of tarnish on it and stuff like that. Now, were this any other sword, that would not be acceptable. However, because this is a replica of a World War II antique, um, it actually fits really well, and personally, I like how the sword looks. So, I'll stand back a bit and give you a shot of the full sword, and uh, then we'll see about deconstructing it. So, here is the sword itself in full. Um, hopefully it's still picking up my voice. Might be a bit quiet, might have to do a little bit of tweaking of the audio on this, I'm not sure. But, if I draw the blade... It is quite long, point of balance is about there, on it. so it's fairly well balanced. It feels very good when you use it two-handed, so you can do all of the usual stuff. I don't really have much room to maneuver in here, so I apologize if my form is a little bit off. I haven't done Ijitsu in a long time, but, you know, you know, you can do all the stuff with it, and, uh, Ultimately, it, it feels really good to use. Now, CN Best, when I contacted him, or them, they did say that the sword is not, and I quote, battle ready, and they advised me not to cut anything stronger than, like, wood or anything like that. I wasn't planning on doing any serious cutting with this anyway, mostly I got it for a collector's piece. But anyone who's uh, interested in checking this sword out and the other products that CN Best sells, just be aware that their swords are supposedly not battle-ready. I have no doubt that this thing would be able to manage some light cutting without any problems whatsoever, but, uh, like, we're talking some small time mats, water bottles, that sort of thing, maybe some fruit, but I would not go around cutting wood or anything like that with this. The edge on this is basically non-existent at the moment. There is kind of an edge, uh, I think if you swung it hard enough, you'd cut something. But, again, if I'm going to do any serious cutting with this, which I probably won't, I will first have to put a proper edge on it. I did a, uh, a paper test with it when I got the sword. It was pretty disappointing. <laughs> Honestly, it was a little bit embarrassing. It just kind of ripped the paper. Again, um, so, if you're looking for a sword to, for heavy use, I would not recommend this, but if you are like me and you just want a nice collectible that is uh, not going to fall apart on you and could be used for cutting, if you put an edge on it, then go ahead. This is actually quite a cheap sword in terms of like overall price. Some swords can range in the 500 to uh, over $1,000 in USD, and I'm in Australia, so... Everything uh, United States costs, like, almost double for me. Well, it's not quite that bad, but it's still, it's, like, just for reference, that sword cost me about $120 USD. Uh, that plus the shipping in Australian dollars came out to almost 200 So I have to be kind of careful with my budget, especially right now. The Australian dollar is ridiculously weak. Anyway, I'm going to take this sword apart. And I will move the camera and we'll uh, show you the little maintenance I did on the tang. Call it maintenance, I just wrapped some tape around it. But I'll show you all the little parts and everything. And, uh, yeah. Alright, so I've taken the sword apart. Or, more or less, anyway. Uh, you can see here, just on the tang, I have wrapped two strips of tape. Rather roughly around it. I'm probably going to replace that tape with something a little bit better. This is just basic masking tape. But that is to fit the tang in a little bit better. Uh, I haven't taken these parts out, but they do. They are all removable. There's a little button and everything. Let's see inside. Pretty standard. There's the little bamboo pin that holds it all together. But you can see that it is full tang. The tang is fairly thick. And I only needed about one or two layers of tape to stop it from wobbling. Um, but again, the fact that it was wobbling at all was probably going to be a turn-off to a lot of people. I personally am not super bothered, seeing as I'm not going to be using this for any heavy usage. 
But I can understand if that would put people off uh, buying from this seller. The, I could probably do something else to the tang a little bit more professionally to make it fit better, or alternatively, I could get the handle replaced. I don't know where you would find another uh, good quality Gunto handle, but I'm sure I could get it arranged. But at the moment, I have no need to. The sword works perfectly fine for me in its current state. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you that it was, it is all, comes apart and everything. Yeah, I'll just put it back together now. Can't really capture that on film because I need two hands for it and I'm filming this on a shitty phone. As if you couldn't tell. So, there you have it. Uh, just a reproduction Shin Gunto Type 94. Nothing really fancy, it's certainly not a masterpiece or anything, but the the good thing is, the Shin Gantos seldom were masterpieces. They were mass-produced, um, usually machine-made. Some of the uh, more fancy ones, the Type 94s, and I think some of the Type 98s, they did have um, actual like katana blades that had been forged and were from the old samurai families and stuff, but most of them were machine-made. No ham online, they were just sort of ground out of sheets of metal. Um, I think later on in the war they actually just stopped using like proper ear wrapping and everything, they just stuck wooden handles on there. There was the Type 95, which was uh, all metal. I'm actually thinking of getting myself a reproduction of the Type 95. There's one that's done by Universal Swords, and uh, when, I, uh, when I've got the finances for it, I might actually pick one up. Who knows? That would be, I think, a cool, cool uh, addition to the collection. I like these swords, I like the design of them, and I think that the era that they are from and the way that they reflect the era and the country that they were uh, used in is very fascinating, the way that they evolved over time, or devolved, I suppose you could say, and... Um, Ever since I saw one of these at a friend's house, it, I think that one was either a Hanway Captain's Gunto, or it was a really, really well-maintained Genuine. It was years ago, though. But ever since then, I've wanted one for myself, and now I got one. I wouldn't mind getting a leather cover for it. Um, probably not a Genuine one. Leather cover and maybe a little tassel to go on the end here. I can't remember what this little bit is called, but... I don't know. You can buy the tassels and the leather stuff, you can buy genuine ones, but they're, they're a little bit expensive and usually very worn, they're collector's pieces. So, um, actually, if anyone watching this knows where I could potentially get a reproduction leather covering for this, um, I would be interested to know, because I think that would be a nice little add-on to this collector's piece. Again, I've posted a link to CN Best in the description if you want to check out his products. He does a lot of Guntos, um, I think he does some Kai Guntos, some Shin Guntos, he does a lot of other just regular swords. I, I keep saying he, I don't know who it is, it's probably more than one person, so it's a bit of a shop. And um, their products are fairly cheap. It's worth mentioning also that the shipping was, like, surprisingly fast. When I bought it, I had an estimated shipping time of the 9th of August all the way up to, like, the 28th of August. And it arrived on the 2nd of August. So, and, and I bought it uh, in late July. Yeah, like, 28th to 27th of July or something. So it was very fast shipping. Maybe that's just because I live close-ish to China. I don't know, but it got here faster than I was expected, and that was nice. Um, so again, if you're looking for something to do any serious cutting with, or you're looking for something that's like super high quality, probably not going to get it here, but I haven't found anywhere else that sells nice, pretty decent quality Gunto replicas that are, in my opinion, very pretty, very... Very, uh, very nice to have in a collection, and still capable of being used to cut with. Although, again, you're probably going to want to put your own edge on it. So, that's all. Uh, hope you enjoyed this review, and uh, see you next time.